For those of you who have attended our live virtual shows before, welcome back. And if you've never joined us before, welcome. We know that you're going to love it. We do take questions and we will answer as many as we can throughout. For those of you who are not able to get to, we will be happy to contact you after this live program. Please be sure to enter your questions using the Q&A function. We will be monitoring that. Please use the chat function to let us know what you like about the program. We'll be dropping some information and links for you uh, to download and use in the chat function. We'll also be recording today's program to go up on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days. So please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time we post a new video. So today's panel, I'm so excited to welcome these industry experts. I have today with me, Ralph Giordano, David Powers, Tim Farrell, Shelley Shepler and Diane Lagerstead. And I'm not lying when I tell you these people are incredible. Just a little um, housekeeping here. If you could make sure that you keep your questions in the Q&A section and use the chat just to say nice things. And we'll be posting some um, links, uh, et cetera, in there. And here's our social media. We'll be posting this again later on. So no need to worry about um, getting onto that right now. So first of all, I know Ralph, hi, um, first up here, I know that you're very active in the floral community and thank you for being an amazing mentor and educator. One of the things I see you sharing a lot, especially around the holidays, are your tips on cold storage and care and handling, where you share some awesome tips to give your products some excellent shelf life. And I thought it'd be great for you to share with our floral community here. Ralph, over to you. Thank you, Lottie. Uh, yeah, so what you're seeing on your screen right now is a shot of my cooler during the Christmas um, holiday and some roses on the right-hand side. So what we do in my store and what I um, educate about is the practice of pre-cleaning your product and then dry, cold storing your product for longer periods. It extends the shelf life and increases the life of the botanical by doing this process. By eliminating some of the foliage, you are reducing any excess moisture that leads to bacteria and mold, which obviously kills the botanical. So what you wanna do in this situation is you wanna pre-clean as much of the foliage as you can from the top wrapper, and then you want to rebox them and put them in your cooler cold. Don't cut them. Don't let them see any water yet. You're dry storing them. This is going to allow you to buy in bulk and it's going to allow you to work with your wholesaler to get much better prices. You'll be, you'll be able to bring in majority of your product at least two weeks in advance and take care of all of the prep work that you need way before you start getting really busy in your holiday. Ralph, that's awesome information. Thank you. Um, seems super simple, but I know it works for you. Um, can you tell us roughly um, how long? I know um, you're, you've done a ton of experiments. How long um, does that um, kind of give you on your products and how long, um, how much in advance are you able to, to prep? Sure, absolutely. So we bring in our product, um, the majority of our product, about 90% of it, two weeks prior to any major holiday. And we cold store during that time frame, And then as we need, we cold hydrate, which is the best way to hydrate your product. And then we still get the standard lifespan of that botanical. So you still get your week out of your roses. You still get your two to three weeks out of your carnations and Alstro. So what you're, you're, all you're doing is delaying that clock that's starting for the lifespan of the product. That's awesome. Thank you, Ralph. Excellent information. And I'm sure um, super useful for everybody here. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. David, um, thank you for joining us. You are an awesome educator as well. And you do double duty as sales manager for Potomac Wholesale in Silver Spring, Maryland. 
Um, and I thought today you wouldn't mind sharing with us what's hot this Mother's Day. We're going to ask you to take yourself off mute too. <laughs> David, can you hear us? I think we have a connection problem, do we? I think we've lost him. Oh, darn it. This was awesome. <laughs> David. All right. So I think what we'll do now, um, while David logs on, um, I know we have some, you, you all love the the design tips. So um, I'm going to, oh, David, do we see you again? <laughs> Without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Tim. I know, uh, thank you, Tim, for joining us today. Um, I know you've got some beautiful design ideas for us. And um, I know you've got several different ideas and we also have some recipes that we're going to be able to pop in the chat here later on um tim i'm going to send it over to you well thanks lonnie hi everybody and thanks for joining us tonight um there's lots of great information that's going to be shared with everybody during this zoom meeting and it's really great information to just take notes on and really take in and and look at other ways to do things because that's how you can make your holidays most successful and that's what we're all about at teleflower we're here partnering with you to make your holidays more successful so the whole industry can be better. So what I have for you first is we're, we're looking at the butterfly pitcher. That's one of the, the featured items for our Mother's Day lineup this year. And I particularly uh, fell in love with this item. I think it's a great item that I know consumers are gonna love. But what I wanted to share with you was three different ways to produce these um, in designs that can be easily mass produced and you know, store them in your refrigerators and then add to them as you need if you need to add a little bit more. But just to show you um, the versatility of these beautiful containers that Teleflor is producing for us. So let me show you the first one I have up for you. So, okay. Uh, again, this beautiful butterfly pitcher is a fabulous container. It's that beautiful earthenware with the rougher glaze on the bottom and the beautiful lavender glaze here. And this design is a very nice design, very easy to make because um, it is done in floral foam. And we have the line established with the Snapdragons. We have the line continued with the purple carnations. One beautiful scabiosa. Look how just that one flower, just using one of something in a design, which used to be against the rules, can be used to make something really beautiful. And then again, this beautiful green viburnum. So the color harmony that we're going to follow through with all of these in this three, um, in these three segments that we have right here, are going to follow the same color harmony, the same basic recipe of flowers, but more added as we get into more premium designs and things that are a little bit more upscale for your customers. So this is something that could very, very easily be produced. Um, it's a great keepsake, and I think that's something to really remind our customers of as well. The value in these is not just the beautiful human emotion that's expressed when you deliver a beautiful product like this, but there's actually a keepsake product for that person to have and to remember the thoughtfulness of the sender for years and years later. So this was the first design in the butterfly picture. Uh, the second one we have is a little bit different um, and trying to um, capitalize on a more um, up-to-date design style that we're starting to see a little bit more in the industry and something that some consumers are looking for. So here's the second design. And again, same container, same basic combination of flowers, but the way this has been designed is to make it look a little bit more up-to-date and a little bit more contemporary and maybe something that your competition is not offering right now. So again, the beautiful viburnum, and again, this lime green, I think that this color green against anything in the lavender family really makes it pop and allows the color to be really more exciting than it would be if it was toned down. But look at just even the placement we have Instead of that, that up and down, that vertical movement with the snapdragons, we've taken them off to one side and we've um, kind of reinforced that with one stem of beautiful hybrid delphinium here, which is just a little bit different tone than the lavender of the snapdragons that we've started with. We have beautiful kale, this, this ornamental kale in this feathery type of um, variety. We have the scabiosa again, but even the thistle, the eryngium, look how that brings in almost that lavender blue and helps you tie in the color of the container back again. 
And then again, we have the scabiosa, the flower here, and some of the scabiosa buds, which are kind of jumping out of the arrangement. But this shows a little bit more energy to the design. It isn't quite as stagnant. It isn't quite as formed as maybe some other designs would do. And it shows, and it kind of implies that there's more energy to this. And the flowers are actually kind of popping out or growing out of the container that we have. Again, we've used two tulips. And then this darker value of purple, if you can see in here, see the beautiful purple carnations, this one, two. Look how that darker value brings you through the arrangement because it looks like a shadow further in the back. So it helps to achieve depth in the design and bring your eye from the front all the way to the back of the design. So this is kind of an exciting design to, to show something different with the same type of botanicals that we bought already, but with a different design style. And we're going to upgrade it just a little bit more. So we have that one here, we have this one, let's get rid of this. And now we're gonna take that same sense of energy and just explode it even further. And isn't this fun design? Just in the fact of, look at these movements of, of these flowers, how they look like they're just growing right out of the container. Same basic combination of flowers. Um, the only thing different that we've added to this was the pussy willow. And let me get this close so you can see. I found this at the wholesaler today. It's actually pussy willow that's dyed with lavender dye. And I'm usually not a big fan of dyed flowers, but these look so natural. And I thought they really tied in nicely to the container. So it helped give unity in the design. And look at this beautiful addition of the jasmine vine. Look at how that just, you know, cascades out of the design, falls down, it could be on a ledge, so it falls over the ledge, or it could crawl across the counter, whatever you'd like it to do. But, you know, look, look at how we have three different offerings here. And this is the way we can display them in our shop. We might set up one table with maybe a tablecloth in like maybe a nice green like this, pop these three arrangements on there together and show your customers the variety of things you can do using maybe the same flowers and same containers that other florists have, but it's your design skill that make it better. Lottie has um, pictures of all these. We're gonna drop into, I think the chat later and also recipes. So there's uh, really fair dollar values assigned to each flower, number, stem count, so you can actually see the breakdown on these and see if these might work for you in your shop for Mother's Day. All right, that's it for the first set and it's back to you, Lottie. Thank you, Tim. Um, beautiful, beautiful design. Thank you. Particularly the last one, of course, because it has the most flowers in it and you've got the the height and the beautiful uh, jasmine vines, of course. <laughs> I like that one too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know um, I'm, I don't recall the, the price range that you did, but I remember that the first one was about $69.99, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, you know, I don't have those sheets in front, but I think it was $69.99, okay. and I think this one yeah. was like $99.99, and I yeah. think this was $149.99. So we do have a nice right. variety. And again, we'd like to tell like you know all of our partner members at Teleflora, when you put that variety of prices in your cooler, and in your on your website in particular, put higher price items in there because that helps to push up your average order value. So there are the things in marketing trip tips that we can share with you to help you be more successful. Just putting something more expensive in there, even if you're not going to sell it, helps to bring up the average order value on the other things and the other selections that the customers have. Thank you so much, Tim. Really beautiful, and um, we we'll look forward to seeing more from you later on, Tim. All right, so now I am going to turn it over. Um, I have amazing, I work with amazing people. Um, we're so lucky to have some of my colleagues here from Teleflora's gold team, our e-commerce specialists. Um, Shelly and Diane, I know you've got some incredible tips today and we've got a lot of slides to get through and um, you two are incredible. So I'm going to turn it over to both of you. Thank you, Thank Lottie. You. So happy to be here with you today and so excited that we got such a great turnout um, for this webinar. So kudos to all of you for showing up. Um, my name is Diane Lagerstead and I am a uh, eFlorist sales specialist. One of the questions I get asked all the time is can I or how do I add flowers to my own eFlorist or add my own designs to my eFlorist website? And I'm here to tell you it's easy to do and you absolutely should do it. So it all starts with a login to ESAT. ESAT kind of sounds like a little bit of jargon, but it's eFlorist self-administration tool. And we know 
through studies that we've done that engagement in ESAT will help you drive orders. So what's engagement in ESAT? Well, it could be something as simple as creating your own bouquet and adding it to your website uh, products, or it could be using the blog feature that's on the website. Maybe it is adding um, a staff picture to the About Us page and always, always changing that front homepage, changing the, the look and feel of that homepage with different products. That's like your front window on your store and your eFlorist site is really your second store. So those are some ways that you can engage in ESAT. And I'm gonna show you how this one is super easy. You're gonna start by going to your ESAT administration tool and click on merchandising and then product management. And then you'll come to the Manage Products page. And right up at the very top, there's a big, go back one slide there, Lottie, if you can. There's a big new product um, button, a green button with, that says new product. Just click that. And once you're into this next uh, window, go ahead, there you go. ESAT, E in ESAT stands for easy, and it really is. You just follow the prompts in the Create Product window here. You're going to want to name that product. You're going to want to give it a number. And you have to tell the website what type of a product this is. Is this a um, hand-delivered product? Is this a browse-only product, something that you might have on the website that's truly not for sale, but you want people to know that you carry it? Or is this a product like a gift that you're going to be able to ship out to customers? And then you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna click the product type. And there's a range of products types here for you to choose from. Um, in this particular case, we're gonna say flower arrangement, um, but you could choose plant or you could choose boutonniere or corsage. All the different types of products are listed there. And then it's time to add some price points. So once you add your price points there of $75 for the standard, Maybe you want to offer a deluxe and a premium as well. You're going to want to click that add price point button. So the next step is adding your image. Just click that image icon button. There you go. And a pop-up will show up that allows you to grab a picture from your computer. Just hit that upload button. Grab the picture wherever you have it stored on your computer, whether it's on your desktop or in your pictures file, and hit save. And now it's time to tell the product where it's going to live on your website. So you're going to want to go to the categories tab. And in category search, we're going to either type the product that we're looking for which is, or type the category that we're looking for, which in this case is gonna be best sellers because we're hoping it's gonna be a best seller. We can scroll down um, using the little slider on the right-hand side, or we can find that product using the category search. Once we find it, we just click that little plus button and it adds that category to the list of categories that your product's gonna live in. The last thing we do before we save it is we're gonna write a description. And so I've been thinking and thinking about what to write in here. Give me a click, Lottie. Thank you, one more. All I could come up with was mixed flowers in a lavender keepsake picture. But before we save this and put that live out on the website, I think my friend Shelly can help us come up with a much richer description. Shelly? Thanks, Diane. Yeah, let's take a look at this. And you know what you said, a lavender picture, beautiful mix of, of uh, flowers is a nice start. But first, I think we're going to need a list of keywords for our inspiration. And with that said, you could go through and you could pick a lot of relevant keywords that would apply to flower shops, uh, flowers being given at Mother's Day. 
and go through and try to come up with some keywords that we can add into this description. So here's kind of a starter list, but this is something that you might keep a notepad on in the shop or connected to the cooler. And every time you think of something, write it down. But here's some of our inspiration we're going to use to write this description for this arrangement. So I took your initial description, mixed flowers in a lavender keepsake picture. And that has two keywords, but I know we can do a little bit better by using that inspiration list that we, we created earlier. So let's see where we can go. We did 15 keywords and I've highlighted all those in that lavender color so it's easy to identify. But you can see these keywords are words that um, a consumer would search on the internet when they're searching for a beautiful gift, in this case for their mother. So mom's garden bouquet in a fresh floral mix of fragrant spring flowers to delight any mom this Mother's Day. This handcrafted floral selection features scented hyacinth and pastel roses in a lavender stoneware pitcher with bright hot, spring, hot pink spray roses and purple status pop against green hydrangeas. The clean white mini daisies add sweetness. Your mom will love this beautiful collection of spring blooms. So you can see that's jam packed with some key descriptive words of this arrangement, giving it a beautiful description, but it's also those keywords that a consumer would search on the internet to find a beautiful gift for their mom this coming holiday. But I think we can take it one step further, Diane, and we can add those geo-targeted keywords. And that's what you see in this final description in that hot pink. Those are those geo-targeted keywords. I don't know if you've heard this term, but um, those are keywords that are specific to the name of your shop and its physical location and the locations that you deliver to within your community. So adding those into the description just really boosts that description overall. So those search engines, when they crawl your website, they're learning more and more details about you. So this is a great description. Let's go with that one, Diane. Okay, we'll copy it and paste it, put it in the description and hit that save button. All right, let's see it on the website. There it we is. go. Ready it looks to sold. <laughs> looks beautiful. So it's nice to incorporate your own work um, into the website. You can certainly do that. They can stand aside a Teleflora uh, floral selection guide item, or they could be just your own work on the, the Teleflora site. But at any rate, it's nice to take that extra step and write in those keywords to the description. We're here to help you at Teleflora in the in the eFlorist department. You can call us, you can do live chat within the ESAP part portal, you can email us, you can watch video tutorials much like this. You can book a, an appointment directly on our calendar, go to your ESAP portal, look at that purple, uh, learn how to, and hit the green button and you can book an, an exact appointment in time with one of our specialists. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lottie. Thank you, Lottie. Thank you so much. Great tips. And I know um, that we also have a recording of this that we did last week that's up on our education hub and we'll share more information about how to get to that later on. Um, but uh, if you need more information, we've, we've got some more coming up later. Um, now, uh, thank you so much. Ralph, I am going to turn it back over to you because another you're internet famous for is your organization skills so um i'm gonna ask you i'm gonna put this um uh up at this up on the screen ralph i'm gonna turn it over to you what is going on here and um how does this help you in your shop sure so what uh what you're looking at is some of the this year's mother's day items that we are featuring at my shop and this is a simple document created on word um, you can also create it on Canva. And what we do with these is all of my designers get these recipe sheets with the broken down stem count, the hour pricing for our items with the code number that is specifically designed to my point of sale system. So for an example, the 125 for the M100, every year, number 125 is the M100 
we just change out the description to associate it with that current year's item. Um, this also gets cut up and placed in front of the designs in the cooler. So that way the drivers can instantly see what design they're looking for from a name perspective, a item number perspective, and then an image perspective. And this is what how we, we use that to calculate the number of stems we need for each design. So what you're looking at now is a portion of a spreadsheet for my up and coming holiday. And the numbers across the top are the unique code numbers that are allow aligned in my point of sale system. And then there is a list of a handful of the items that are in those arrangements with the stem counts. And what we do is we do the stem count for the middle version of all of them. So that way we have a little bit of play between our premium and our standards. And then that carries over to um, the math for what you actually need. Now I have um, other columns in there on who it was ordered from, how much we paid, um, if there, if it arrived or not, how many to order. So we have an overflow. And this is a very simple Excel spreadsheet. And when you actually uh, create this, you can send this to your wholesalers and it will make your ordering with them much, much easier. Thanks, Ralph. And I know um, David is going to address that later on because I'm sure um, David is super thankful when he receives something like this from a, a, from a florist. Um, yeah, one absolutely. more slide from you. So uh, you sent me this photograph and I love this. Please, can you explain to us what's going on in this photo? Because I know you often share this on social media as well. Yeah, absolutely. So again, um, you see the yellow highlighted of the scrap paper, which is the item number I just spoke about, the unique number in our point of sale. The color-coded dots serve several different purposes. They are a quick glance at the active current inventory. We use that as a backup to the Dove point of sale um, tracking inventory. So that way, any of my sales team can just turn really quick, take a look at how many dots are there so they know how many they can sell. Then what we do is we transfer that dot to the actual order itself. So that way it's on the order. Again, we have a specific color that's associated with each number. And those colors and those dots transfer to all of the items that we place in the cooler. Um, so when a driver is looking for orange 125 they don't necessarily need to know that it's um you know telflorals m100 they just look for an orange dot with the 125 they see the photo they know what it looks like in in the photo they can find it in the cooler very easily then what we do is we use scrap paper for all of our orders that are being done and placed into the cooler that way we can keep the card message pristine and have no flaws on it, no water damage, no fingerprints, none of that nonsense. Um, and we do some basic information. We do the last name of the recipient, the ticket number, date, and the city that it's going to. So that way in the cooler, you can organize your deliveries in certain areas, whether it be by date or the zip code or whatever it is that you do in your cooler, you can do that much easier than having to look at the card um, and look at the exact address. Then what we do is when we, when we print up our point of sale ticket and we fold it up, we put a business card in every single order that goes out the door, except for sympathy ones that go to a funeral home. If it's going to a residence, every order gets a business card. And on the back of our business cards is a QR code to leave us a Google review. Google reviews are extremely important these days and have been for a long, long time. Lastly, you see name tags there. Um, I just happen to have mine up front, you know, because <laughs> it's me. Um, but the name tags we use on a daily basis and we use them during the holidays. And what that is, is every designer has a handful of these tickets, uh, name tags. And on our order board, when we have all our orders laid out and whether we have five or a hundred the name tags are there to indicate which designer is working, currently working on which ticket. So on a normal basis, on a daily basis, 
if a driver is looking to find orders that are ready to be delivered and they have one more or two more that are in that route, they know exactly who's working on it and they can go straight to that designer and ask how much longer before this is finished so we can get it out on the road. So it improves efficiency much, much better. Um, it gives you multiple check, multiple backups to your check system. And um, it just, it makes your holiday run so much smoother. Um, and then what we'll do is, again, each one of those dots indicate the number of containers. So for those first three, we bought 24. You'll see two dots up in the very top. Those are my backups. Those are, what if somebody made a mistake? What if a container slipped out of their hands and broke? So if we sell out of everything, I always still have two containers of each one of those specials held back just in case, because we want to make sure that our recipients and our senders are extremely happy with what they've received. Wow, Ralph, that's so much information. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. And I know you're always awesome about sharing that. Um, on social media. So thank you again for being such an amazing mentor. Um, I know we, we've had several comments and questions, uh, particularly about the color coding. So um, thank you. And I'd love to hear from um, everybody that's on this webinar today, um, who uses the color co coding uh, system, but just pop in the chat there if you would, um, if you use the color coding system. I know the, um, you, the, I know the system has been around for a while, but it's tried and true. And, um, if it's not broke, why fix it? Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm glad you mentioned uh, about the Google reviews because, uh, Diane and Shelly are going to be talking about that very, very shortly. But, um, again, I'm going to, um, turn it over to Tim. Um, one of the things that we get asked for regularly are some tips for those, um, higher price point arrangements. So, um, Tim, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. So the first design I have for you now is, is this one that's in the, the Blooming Brilliant, which is part of the lineup for Mother's Day again. And it is a fabulous container. It is almost like the mosaics, but it has tiny little almost glittery pieces of glass that are um, adhered or finished on the outside of the cylinder base. But the one flower that's the flower that people know is a premium flower right now is the peony. People love peonies. And these are one called Carl Charm. And they are not inexpensive, but just adding two of these beautiful flowers into a design like this makes it a premium product. And something that your customers are going to understand is a little bit more special and a little bit more valuable. So we've used the beautiful container. And again, taking the hint from the color combination, I know the lights are kind of bright here, but it really is almost like a, like a peachy pink tone to the container and we grab both pinks and peaches to, to bring more color into the design and, and give you a fabulous look. So, I mean, look at those beautiful tulips with the feathery edge. So they're a beautiful apricot color um, with this feathered edge to it. Beautiful spray roses. These come from Holland right now and they're a, a fantastic peachy color with tones of pink to them as well too. And in the back, we have some, some Lysianthus, a beautiful Lysianthus blooms. And don't forget for texture, we're just adding in some Hypericum berry. A um, little bit of filler, wax flower. I know David's going to talk to you later about this, but fillers are very big again. And, and people are interested in seeing other things and other textures in your design. So looking at the fillers that are available to you, like the wax flowers and rice flowers and things like that, give you great options of, of additional elements to put into your designs to give them a little bit more interest. But again, this design is a little bit more compact. Um, it's not totally round. It has more of an oblong shape to it because it is extended a little bit on either side. Um, but it has value to it. And again, mostly because of the peonies that are in there. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. Um, if conditioned properly, they're still going to give the customer a couple days on their own there. But fabulous container, fabulous flowers. It's a win-win for florists. So let's look at something like this, but upgraded even more for more, more uh, higher value sale. So here we have the same container, same color palette, but we've added some other flowers to this to give it a little bit more interest. In particular, the Bells of Ireland. And, and we as designers know that Bells of Ireland are what we call geotropic. They always want to grow opposite the force of gravity. So no matter where you put them, the tops are always going to want to grow up. So we've inserted these on a more of a horizontal angle, 
but you'll see how the tops are already curling towards the top. And what the nice part about this is it kind of gives you some line to draw your eye back into the arrangement. And it starts a line here, suggest it, and your eye will actually continue on this line to about here and then fall down into the center where we have, again, those beautiful coral charm peonies. So we have three of those beauties in there. Can you see them? And isn't it beautiful how as they open, they actually change in color as well. They're a little bit more severe in color as they close. And look how they, they kind of blush out a little bit as they open a little bit more. We have, look at these beautiful tulips. Again, with this pointed edge to them. So bringing our customers some products that are a little bit more unusual, maybe not the tools that they're seeing in the grocery store, is a way to give value to our brand and help people coming back into flower shops because they know they can get something more special there. We've used these beautiful chrysanthemums because, you know, for me, I know so many people are interested in dahlias, but I have this love-hate relationship with dahlias because I find that when they're local, I do really well with them, but they are not a flower that ship as well. I found that these uh, disbudded mums are a great substitute for values in many situations because one, they'll give you a little bit more life to them, but two, they actually are available in many different colors and really do mimic the same form as a dahlia. So many customers are very happy with them. They may not even know they're quote unquote mums because there's this whole prejudice against mums. It seemed from years ago, but look at them in a design like that. Aren't they fabulous? And towards this side, this, this butterfly ranunculus, isn't that like fabulous? It, it almost looks like a, a hybrid between a regular ranunculus and lisianthus, doesn't it? But that corally color again. So you see there's transition in these colors. We start with almost yellowy peaches, go through corals to darker peaches, the hypericum berry with even more peach there, and then some pinks in here as well too. For texture in here, let me see if I can get this to the right angle here. Can you see the rice flower that's in here? Right here. That's a fabulous texture that when you put that into design, again, adds more visual interest to it. And whenever we add texture to our designs, we know that that draws customers in. It's almost a challenge for them to, to see with their eyes and then be drawn in with their hands to explore and say, is that really what I think it is as far as texture goes? And they, they kind of want to get in and feel the flowers. But, you know, wouldn't that be beautiful on a table? We have to get over the fact that we don't have to have symmetrical things on tables all the time. Like if it's in the center of a table, it doesn't have to be exactly the same on one side as the other. We can start to stretch our creativity and, and have things that are asymmetrical but balanced all together. So it makes a beautiful centerpiece for a table. So this is, um, again, the second one using the brilliant blooming it's bl no, blooming brilliant. It's blooming brilliant. I think of people from like Lottie from the other side of the pond. Go, oh my God, this is, this is uh, blooming brilliant. No, brilliant blooming. You know, like I think it's a great container and a great name for something like this. But again, the after use of this container is fabulous because it would be a great little thing on a desk for pens or little note cards, something like that. So that's the two in that design. And again, these are available for Mother's Day. I would highly recommend to, to any florist out there to take advantage of the 48 packs of any of these that you can. Most of these containers, almost all of them are developed with the after use for flower shops afterwards. So it's not necessarily all Mother's Day. So these are things that can be bought into your everyday line. So, you know, why not buy the 48 pack? And even if you only sell 24 for Mother's Day, you have another 24 to sell through the rest of the month of May and into June and maybe the rest of the summer. And they're great items to have on your website. So let's move on to our next one. So this one is the Rosy Swirls. And... For this design, we did a little something funky here. So this is the way we can maybe sometimes stretch our creative muscle for our customers to allow them to see the, the ranges that we have as far as what we can do with products and what we can do with flowers. So instead of making this more of a, a traditional triangular design, let's see if we can get this back up here. This one I should put back again. Yeah, that's how it goes there. Look at this, the beautiful bells of Ireland that give you this big swooping movement. And we have these gorgeous Cluny ranunculus right here, the Cluny ranunculus in this pale pink. Lysianthus, we have the hydrangea, but look at this item that comes through here and winds through here. So for this, what we've done is we've just taken a little bit of uh, barked wire or rustic wire that is made from the Oasis company. And we've wound some yarn around it just to get us a different texture and to bring in the color that's in the vase. So by using a design like this, we're using more of line and texture within the design to make this very interesting for the viewer. And we have, again, this up and down line movement that we see 
with the ranunculus and the bells of Ireland that's there. But having this winding kind of artificial body kind of move through this arrangement takes us from being something a little bit more static to being something a little bit more dynamic. And that's the term we use in floral design for that. So we have this beautiful creation that really looks like a piece of art. Instead of just another flower arrangement with beautiful flowers in a vase, there's more thought in this because of the use of line and the use of space and the use of materials that we put in there. So having something like this available in your store, on your website, in your cooler, is something that, again, expresses to the, to the customers that you're serious about what you do and you like to be artistic and want to create something beautiful and maybe one of a kind for their sender or for their recipients as well. Okay, let's move on to another one. So we also had in this vase, if we wanted to really upgrade this, look at those beautiful flowers in there. There is a little bit of everything in this design. And this was really made with a lot of materials that I had left over from what I was creating for you today. And that's the nice part about what we can do in a flower shop. Sometimes we get in orders that just have a dollar value and maybe a color combination to go with it or a color harmony. But in this, you know, look at how we've taken the, the initial pinks and peaches that we might have worked with so far, but we've added so much more to this. We've added some lavender like the kale. We've added in the hybrid delphinium. We've added in again some more of the coral tones and the pink. So there's a lot of different things. And, and look at those tulips, those beautiful fringe tulips, but look what happens to them when we actually open them up. And it's what we call reflexing in the design world. We reflex them open, just kind of put our thumb behind the petal and give it a push from one side and it opens it up and it becomes this beautiful flower that to me is very reminiscent of something we might've seen in a Dutch master painting. So think about maybe what you have and how you can use your knowledge of color to combine more unexpected color harmonies to make something gorgeous. So this is, again, beautiful. This is probably the most expensive arrangement we're going to have because it has so, so much product in it, but it does, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Just because of all the things that are in there. So we have two more for you. Let me get over here and get the last two. And we're back to the butterfly picture again, but I want to show you some even more options of what we can do with that. Okay, and on this one, this butterfly picture, this is a really easy to produce item. It can be done in less than three minutes if you really think and concentrate on what you're doing. And again, it starts with the insertion of the Bells of Ireland. There's three pieces put in here, two on one side, one on the other. And what we've done is we've taken all the Bells of Ireland that were the lower parts of the stem, and we've cut them into individual little segments and used them to kind of cover up the foam and hide the mechanics that we have there. It almost looks like hydrangea, doesn't it? So instead of using two stems of hydrangea, we'd use that in the back. And then we're able to use one stem in the hydrange of hydrangea in the front to really give us some visual weight there and have this look balanced on top of this design. And then three simple tulips, one, two, three, popped on there. Just kind of springing up in almost a phoenix-like fashion out of that design. Adding in the butterflies, again, to unify it to the theme that's presented here already. Just give it a little bit of whimsy. May not be for everybody, but I'll tell you what, there's about 50% of flower buyers out there that if you put, as they say, a bee, a bird, or a butterfly on something, it's gonna attract them to it, it's gonna make it sell. So it's not always about what you want, think about what your customers want and think about what might make something sell and maybe just make it extra special for them. And we have one more design for you. And that's this butterfly picture. So look at the line on this and look at the creativity that's used to make this something really special for your customer. And looking down into the design, again, we have those beautiful tulips again, but based in with some of those spray roses, those chrysanthemums worked real deep into the design to give you some visual weight and to help to cover up the foam that's there. But clusters of the berries, the beautiful oryngium or thistle really help to tie it again to the color of this. But there's an extension of beautiful hybrid delphinium, the butterfly ranunculus, and this, which they call, I just saw this for the first time at the wholesale, it's called Bloom Broom. It almost looked like the type of Baptista to me, but with a smaller foliage, but just giving you some line coming out this way and then balancing it with these beautiful tropical looking Xanadu leaves on the other side. So when we sit this back on the counter like this, you can see, wow, look, look at that. There's not a lot of materials in there, but because the way they're arranged and put along the horizon, it's a little bit more unexpected. And again, gives you a real nice option for your customers.
Okay, so that's it for me, Lottie. It is back to you. Thank you, Tim. Um, I love Mother's Day and thank you, beautiful designs. It does feel like um, as a designer, we, you know, during Mother's Day, we get more of a kind of creative freedom with design styles and flowers um, during Mother's Day. I mean, that's beautiful. So thank you so much. Um, before I um, turn it over to my colleagues again for some more amazing tips, um, I did want to let you all know that we um, have officially launched our new um, education hub. So um, I'm going to post the details uh, shortly. But um, if you go to teleflorafloraldesignhub.com, we have all of the information about our um, upcoming shows and our sponsorships of state and national associations um, and all kinds of stuff that we have going on. We have um, some on-demand programming on there. We have information about our education specialist team and all kinds of fun things that we'll be posting on there um, as the year goes along. So I just really encourage you to communicate with us there. Of course, we have all of our social media. So um, we're really building this amazing uh, community of uh, floral designers. And um, I just want you to know that, um, you know, everybody is welcome, any skill level, and you don't have to be a Teleflora member to join us on there. So um, thank you. And we hey, have- Lottie, just one more thing, if I can just butt in for a second. Yes. Uh, we talked about these uh, containers, the beautiful containers that are available for Mother's Day. And don't you have a special for the people viewing today on buying some of these containers? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. So um, we have a special discount today. So if you um, place an order between now and April 15th, you will get free shipping um, on any product, not just Mother's Day, any product. Um, so free shipping on any product, uh, Teleflora product. So um, I'll be putting in the 800 number for you to call um, between now and April 15th. So there you go, have at it, enjoy. <laughs> All right, so I am gonna turn over back over to um, my colleagues, uh, Diane and Shelley. I know you've got an exciting new feature to share with us. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lottie. Yes, this is pretty exciting. I have to say a review manager is a brand new launch. It's really about building the brand, strengthening the reputation. And this is something that shoppers today are really reading reviews. The interesting thing today, next slide, please, is today the price no longer influences the purchaser. It's reading the reviews and seeing the ratings online is what is making that shopper determine which, which shop they're going to buy from. Thank you. <laughs> so this way, you know, when Telefor was looking at developing this product, they were looking at how to grow more reviews and also knowing that through research that shops that do respond to reviews get 35% more revenue. So in building this new tool into the ESAT, um, we developed this so that you could get more reviews and it will help in responding to the reviews too. It's nothing you have to do. We can do that for you. So increasing positive reviews, attracting more shoppers, and growing more revenues is the point of Review Manager. So the, the process is pretty simple. The customer is going to see reviews online and read about the different shops. That's going to determine who they're going to pick. So that's going to influence the shopper on who they're going to place their order with, which then increases revenue. The driver will make the delivery, and then that's where it gets exciting. Three days after the order is delivered, an SMS text is sent along with an email requesting that consumer or requesting that sender to write a review. They go ahead, they leave the review, and the review manager is actually monitoring for over 150 different review platforms, but that review comes in to the dashboard in ESAT where our team is there to respond to those reviews for you, or you're welcome to do that as well. This is a great way to grow the reviews on, well, out on the internet, but especially we're focused on Google. So here's what the process looks like. You have a Google business page that represents your business on Google. We're 
believe it or not, 92% of all shoppers go today to look at Google to read reviews. So when they go there, they're going to, or when they go and place an order three days after, they're going to get a request to write a review. Again, it comes text message and email. They're going to see review us on Google, the green button, or contact us directly. So they'll have the option to uh, write the review by clicking directly and writing it on Google, or they can contact you if they want to message you directly. So that's how that process works. So I mentioned it, it does sit in the ESAT. So you're able, where, where we showed you earlier, you could change a price and so forth. You're able to see the reviews. In here, you get live updates of those reviews coming in. You can see uh, reviews, the actual reviews and reply to them from this one dashboard. So we're looking at this particular review. We're using the AI tool that's built into us to help us write that quick reply. Like I said, whether it's Teleflora assisting you with that or you doing it yourself, but this AI tool is writing a beautiful, um, quickly generated reply to that consumer. So it will make it short or long. It'll correct the spelling. Lottie, can you click the, the animation, please? Thank you. So you can see how quickly it writes the review. It could be short or long. It'll correct the spelling. It can change the tone if you want it witty, friendly, descriptive, informative, formal. It will do all that for you. You can add in your own flair as well. And then you can post that review. When you post it um, or post the reply as it showed there, it will actually put it directly onto Google as the reply. So that is an easy feature, easily done for you and easily done within the tool, which is great. Next slide, please. So there are a number of different reports built into this in different views. There's a number of filters, but this one I thought was really pretty impressive. You could see where the shop is getting reviews. They have 210 currently. You can see that up in the top at a 4.8 rating, but we can also track and see each week. I pulled the, the this particular report as a weekly report from September till now, basically. And you can see that huge spike in February, the 12th through the 18th, they got 48 reviews. But you can also see the top line where it's, you know, 5.0 for that week for their average, 4.9, and so forth. So it's a quick read on what's happening with your reviews, but you can see how successful the product is at driving a number of reviews each week for the shop. Next slide. Those reviews, again, are coming in from different sources. If you would like, um, all of them can be replied to in that same ESAP portal. But in this case, this is what's on the shops or reflecting on the shop's website as well. So not only are, they, are you able to reply to these different review platforms, but you can also have it reflect on your Teleflora website. So it really gives that assurance to that consumer they're shopping with the right place. This shop is having wedding wire, um, Google reviews, reviews from the Knot, reviews from Facebook, but there's over 150 different review places that um, can reflect onto your Teleflora website as well. Next slide. So if you'd like to learn more about this product, like I said, it's pretty exciting at the, the number of reviews the shops are getting and the the five, four and five star reviews we're seeing on a consistent basis. Diane Lagerstead and myself, Shelly Shepler, are here to answer any questions and we'd love to show you more that the product can do. Thank you, Lottie. Thank you so much, um, Shelly and Diane. This is amazing. And I know we, we you have now a really big announcement. So I'm gonna um, turn it over to you again. Diane. Here I am. I am so excited. Drum roll. <laughs> yeah, drum roll. <laughs> Confetti, everything. Balloons. I'm really excited to announce and kind of go through quickly the uh, subscription feature that's now available on eFlorist. 
subscriptions can be made. You can make any product on your website into a subscription product. Um, you can also create subscription only products like the ones you see here. Um, these subscriptions can be weekly or monthly. It's a much simplified product or simplified process for the consumer and the florist. Um, the frequency and the duration are built into this. Um, and the you billing happens upon the delivery date instead of just one time. That one time purchase of 12 arrangements for one a month for a year was kind of a put off to a lot of consumers because of the high price. This allows you to bill once at a time, once at a time. What I should say um, is that currently this feature is only available for Dove POS and RTI shops. But I know that we're working hard to get it rolled out to everyone who is on eFlorist. Um, it will probably be before the end of the year. Subscriptions offer you unlimited opportunities to increase your sales. And just a few that make sense to me would be maybe turning on the deal of the day uh, to a subscription product so that the consumer has an opportunity to buy that for more than just one time, maybe for a weekly purchase or a monthly purchase. Valentine's all year long, um, make those dozen roses at Valentine's Day a subscription product and see how many of those you can sell throughout the year to one consumer. The plant of the month club would be another great idea um, for a subscription only product. Gravesite placements, what a nice thoughtful gift um, for the family that's out of town to be able to purchase a gravesite um, placement every month for a whole year. I know that um, in my family, we would have really appreciated seeing fresh flowers on the grave when we went to visit from somebody who maybe wasn't um, in the immediate area. Uh, Mother's Day all year long, local grown flowers, um, monthly spa package, sign me up, send me flowers, a candle and some bath salts every month, I'm in. Um, my husband should could really make some points with that. And then maybe something like a weekly flower therapy for somebody who's doing some convalescing or recovering from surgery. I know that you can probably think of a hundred more ideas on how to make this subscription feature work for your shop. Um, and I wanna hear them. So drop them in the chat. So we're gonna go over what this looks like for the consumers. Um, this is a way to encourage repeat sales with monthly or weekly weekly subscriptions on any product. So the consumer will choose a product and on the product page, they'll be given the little check mark that says start a subscription. Why not? I get a subscription for my dog food. I get a subscription for everything in my life. Why not a subscription for flowers? And you choose weekly or monthly. Um, weekly is four, eight or 12 weeks and monthly is three, six, nine, or 12 months. Um, right now, those are the only options, but we wanna hear from you. What do you want it to do? And I know you won't be afraid to let us know. And um, I can see this thing expanding. So in ESAT, if you want to make any product a subscription product, you would go to merchandising and then product management. I think there, there you go. And then choose the product that you want to make into a subscription product. And then you hit that little edit pencil. And that's going to bring up the edit screen. And from here, you want to turn that subscription feature on just like that. Boom. Oh, Robin Rep has a great idea monthly floral class subscription. I love that, Robin. That's a really great idea. So you turn that on and then you wanna hit the save button. Always, always click that save button. And now we're gonna talk about making a subscription only product. We got a lot of feedback that um, florists wanted to have products on their website that were 
only subscription product like the one you see here, um, the signature designed flowers. So same process, um, you'll wanna go to uh, merchandising and product management, um, choose the, the subscription product that you wanna turn on. And then in the edit product screen, you'll wanna turn on the subscription button, go to settings, and then turn it on as a subscription only. This means no matter where it shows up in your website, if you have it on the happy birth or on the birthday category, you're only going to be able to purchase that particular product as a subscription. And don't forget that save button. Again, we are here to help you. Um, we're so easy to get a hold of either by phone. Um, you can live chat with us in ESAP, uh, email eflorist at teleflora.com, um, video tutorials, or book an online appointment on a variety of topics. So we're really excited to roll this out to you today. Um, again, it is only available at the moment for uh, florists that are on eflorist point of sale and RTI, but we're working hard to make it available to everybody out there. And you'll hear from us as soon as it is. Thank you, Lottie. Thank you so much, Diane. That's really exciting. What a cool tool. Thank you. You bet. Um, I know we're kind of running out of time here, but um, I do really, um, now that we have David back, <laughs> back in action, um, David, I'm going to turn it over to you because I know um, in your role as sales manager at Potomac Wholesale in Silver Spring, Maryland, you have a ton of incredible information. And so I did want to um, ask you about, first of all, what's hot in flowers <laughs> and colors this Mother's Day? What have people been ordering so far? Okay, great. Thanks, Lottie. Thanks for having me on here. And I'm sorry about that little we had a power surge of all things uh, and it just knocked technology. me off completely. <laughs> so, but I'm glad to be here. So, um, you know, I'm going to say this, there, there are things that are going to always be hot. Um, and especially the colors that are going to be hot, the colors that are going to be always hot is any shade of pink. Um, any shade of lavender, purple, are going to be great for Mother's Day. But we're seeing a trend of a lot of people using those colors and then adding in pops of other colors. Um, and as far as flowers, your traditional flowers um, are really still very popular, okay? Um, for instance, um, carnations. Um, and it's all in the wording. Um, I hardly ever sell carnations anymore. It's always a dianthus whether you want standard dianthus or whether you would like some of the premium Japanese dianthus. Okay, so giving it a different name is has really helped me sell a lot more of those. Um, tulips. Mother's Day is about the end of the season for tulips, but uh, we were just guaranteed today by several farms um, around the world that tulips are gonna still be available through Mother's Day and a little bit beyond. So take advantage of those. Um, Roses, different colors of roses um, are always going to be there. Hydrangeas are, are really hot. Know how to take care of those. There's a lot of um, easy ways to just put that, cut that hydrangea and put it in water. But there are so many wonderful hydration solutions on our floral market that will help you keep them alive Keep them holding very well. We have tested those products many, many times, and these products are keeping our hydrangeas alive for literally not even changing the water three to four weeks. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, no lie. We It is amazing what these new hydration systems are doing for hydrangeas. Um, but there's a lot of flowers that are um, very popular. And Tim, I'm so glad you had those arrangements there because the most popular flower that we're selling for Mother's Day is this beautiful salmon colored butterfly ranunculus. Absolutely stunning. It is a little bit higher priced product, but if you incorporate it into some of your 
some of your regular flowers, some of your more inexpensive flowers. Um, you can add in some of these other higher priced flowers to elevate that design and the styles. Um, another flower that we're selling a lot of for Mother's Day are anemones. Now, of course, these come in a wide variety of colors as well, but the purple and the fuchsia are the hottest right now. Calla lilies, new, there's a new dianthus. It's in the solo mio variety. This one is fiorno. Um, and with that pink, with that hot pink center, it has just been flying out of here daily. Of course, lisianthus, scabiosa, and lilac. So the lilac is uh, primarily Dutch right now, but in the next few weeks, it's gonna start coming in locally for us um, here on the East Coast. So we'll be having a lot of that um, product being used for Mother's Day. Lottie. Thank you, David. Um, I know mm -hmm. something that's super important and, and you and I talk about this all the time, um, communicating with your wholesaler um, you're always really great and really clear about how to do that. Can you give us a couple of quick tips um, about what we should be saying and how we should be saying it? Absolutely. Remember that your customer is going to tell you exactly what they want. And if they don't like it, they're going to let you know. You should have no problem having excellent communication skills with your wholesaler. They should be able to accept your graciousness of their order and they should be able to accept the time that you call and say this product didn't last and it's all in the way you present it but communication with your wholesaler is key um don't be afraid to ask your wholesaler for specials don't be afraid to at holidays buy your product in case lots carnations either 200 or 400 depending upon the the number that you want for your specific um, store location. Um, tulips, absolutely, they come in cases from Holland and they will through the holiday um, in cases of 12 pack, 25 pack and 35 pack. Um, mixed roses, um, I don't know if I should say this or not Lottie, but our, our roses for um, Mother's Day, there's a box of 250 stems, 50 centimeter are going to be 79 cents a stem and they are right now sending us things like the garden rose varieties like country secret um this one is um candy expression those varieties are a flush right now so it's a mix of what they decide to send but for 79 cents for mother's day is an incredible price so um yes. hydrangeas buy things by the case don't be afraid of that um, as Tim was showing you different varieties of arrangements, always have your staples and know how to do them in different design styles so that you know what's going to happen every week. Ask your wholesaler, do you have standing orders that I can buy on a weekly basis? Um, why not? If you know that you have a box of mixed roses coming every week and you have a small box of carnations and you have maybe a small box of hydrangea, that hydrangea, ask your wholesaler, can you mix that box 20 blue and 20 white? You know, make sure that you're communicating with them and telling them what you want and let them give you a price of what they can do for you. Um, one crucial thing for everybody to really think about and to let their customers know is that just because you see it on Instagram doesn't mean that we can get it right now. Okay. <laughs> And everybody really that. thinks that <laughs> it's crazy, but it, if you, it's all about communication and education. So I literally have florists who are young, up and coming florists. They're incredible designers, but they're asking me for things that are just truly not available. And I'm like, well, I have no problem telling them you need to get yourself some education. And I said, why don't you come to like me? I'm going to do a program this next weekend, this coming weekend. I said, sign up for my program. It's going to be incredible at our open house. So um, pre-ordering, pre-order for holidays three to five weeks in advance. If you order by the case, you should be able to get your product for a minimum 
and I do say this honestly, a minimum of 5% less if you buy it per case. So if you buy a bunch of tulips and it's $10, make sure that if you buy that case three to five weeks in advance, you get at least 5% off of every bunch. Should not be any reason you should be, not be able to do that. I'm gonna say something from a wholesaler's point of view. I have no problem with Teleflora and Flower Buyer. Flower Buyer is incredible. Flower Buyer allows you to buy for Mother's Day now. Flower Buyer allows you to buy at last minute. I know that I'm going to have your back here as much as they're going to have your back right now. Okay? I'm not here to get every single little piece of the pie. Okay? It's not good to put all your eggs in one basket because we just went through Easter. Don't do it. Buy things from several people if you can, if you have the access to several people, and get the best price for yourself, okay? If you want, play that game. Go back and forth until you get the price that you want to pay for something. I have no problem. We do the best that we can. If we can't match it, my apologies, but we can't match it. We have a house to pay for just like you. Um, <laughs> the other things, um, let's see. The last thing I'm going to say is that... Um, if you're buying things by the case, make sure that you understand and you know that if that bunch of tulips was going to cost you $10 and you get it for, let's say, let's say you get it for $8.50, make sure you sell it for your markup at the $10 price. Because in the end, if you have to buy more because you've done so well with your products, you might have to pay $10 a bunch. So make sure that you get your proper markup from the actual wholesale cost, not your sale price. You need to make money. You stay in business. Everybody's happy. Okay, good, Lottie. Thank you, David. Thank you. Food for thought, definitely. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate you. Yeah, there's a lot to think about. And I know um, this is an exciting holiday um, you know, everybody's kind of waiting. So um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our um, incredible panelists. You're all amazing. I do hope that everybody um, attending today, um, you know, got plenty of information to, that they can uh, walk away and would help them in their shops. We appreciate your time, everybody. I want to thank all of our education partners and to all of you. Again, it's awesome to see some familiar names on here. And uh, again, thank you for your time. Please do follow us on social media and check out our new education hub. We have a lot of things coming up this year. This is just the first of many, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Thank you and see you on the next one. Bye.